Historic Game Rewind, 2013 NBA Finals, Miami Heat, San Antonio Spurs, Game 6, one of the most iconic games of all time, one of the games you guys voted on for a vintage throwback game I could deep dive into. Let's take a look, get right to it. First of all, knowing coming into the game, San Antonio Spurs undoubtedly knew LeBron, last three elimination games had been killing it, obviously. You knew that you were going to uh, sustain a tremendous punch from him and how much this game meant to him on his home court with his brothers in Miami, how much he would just basically refuse to lose this game. Didn't matter though, San Antonio still got off to a really, really solid start. You see, look at tip off, LeBron, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, just getting me psyched up to dive into this. Manu Ginobili, look at the amount of talent, Chris Bosh, young Danny Green on the floor at the same time in this finals game. And then Big thing I love to look at is just matchups to start the game because that's probably the thing that honestly coaches spend the most amount of time sort of game planning on is how are you going to match up, who's going to guard who. You see the Spurs had Manu guarding D-Wade to start the game and basically his game plan on him was just to play really far off him. Wade, you know, was able to make an occasional three but was much more of a, a mid-range player, a post-up player. You know, you see the kind of defenses teams play against Simmons today. That was almost the defense that Manu was playing on Dwayne Wade to start the game. You see Kawhi guarding LeBron James to start the game. Tony Parker guarding Chalmers. And then you see again the first play of the game, a little Iverson loop cut for D. Wade. Look at Manu going under all the screens, completely underneath everything. They end up setting aside pick and roll with Bosch. Bosch pops to the elbow, and that's where he was dangerous. Just the added ability to space the floor a little bit for a Miami team that really, you know, besides obviously some great shooters and Miller and Allen, you know, obviously their two best players, Wade and Braun, not big-time shooters, especially at this point in their career. Bosch's ability to stretch the defense out a little bit was pretty big. Let's see what play San Antonio starts with. And then you see the matchups reversed. Miami not matching up the same way as San Antonio. Braun on Manu to start the game. Respecting his greatness. Mike Miller guarding Kawhi. Something obviously you wouldn't be able to get away with today. You see Wade guarding the shooter. Danny Green in the corner. San Antonio for their first play. They knew Miami loves to get aggressive. Almost trap pick and rolls. Have two on the ball a ton. So they had Parker kind of UCLA cut off of Duncan. Duncan sets a side pick and roll for Manu. And Pops... With two on the ball, Duncan's got that whole backside cleared out. Chalmers tries to recognize and come over, but Duncan's so fundamental, the bank shot off the glass. You see again the impact, Mike Miller's spacing. Such an added asset for LeBron. You help off him at all, but you kind of have to do just a little bit to stop LeBron getting to the basket. Mike Miller really made you pay, really space the floor at a phenomenal level. Spurs come back down through or weak as they called it this people don't realize the spurs really only ran basically a few plays they just executed them to perfection this play weak is parker hitting ahead usually to ginobili and then this is a through cut right here cutting like you're going to go all the way through popping back out to the wing and then it's cross screen screen the screener so Kawhi leonard in the in this finals basically was starting as the four for san antonio so cross screen from danny green and then a pin down for Danny Green from Tim Duncan. Look at how Miami, though, so smart. The game plan was basically switch everything. Mike Miller switches onto Kawhi and then fronts the post right here. LeBron switches onto Danny Green coming up. Tells D. Wade, stay in the corner with Manu. Now we got everything covered. San Antonio, though, obviously isn't going to stop playing. Parker does a great job. Love to reject screens back in the day. Takes you right to the screen and then quick crossover dribble. Gets that ball just off the backboard for a goal 10 before Bosch gets a piece of it. You see Manu almost playing head games with Wade right here. As Wade gets this little split type pin down, Manu fakes like he's even going under that. How little respect he had for his jump shot going under this pick and roll right here. And then Wade ends up fumbling it. Manu did a great job. Game plan defense, knowing his personnel. And then who could have predicted this would be the battle for L.A. today, Kawhi big bullies LeBron to the basket in transition. LeBron, bit of a bully himself, though. Kawhi trying his best to prevent the back downs, but this was where LeBron was at his absolute best. Early back downs, post-ups in transition, did such a phenomenal job. Maybe the best ever, just reading the floor, reading the help. 
As San Antonio does a pretty good job guarding straight up, but Tony Parker is a little bit worried that Duncan has to come over, and then Parker's job is to cover down on Chris Bosh. LeBron reads that perfectly, senses that perfectly, hits Mario Chalmers in the corner. Chalmers had four made threes, huge threes in this game. Wild how quickly his career came and went. Was a heck of a player, especially in these finals, at least shot maker. Loop, another San Antonio Spurs favorite play, usually Parker's play. They would zipper screen Manu up, and then Parker basically runs off triple screens from everybody else, and Parker would fly off those screens. If they do a decent job guarding it, they go right into side pick and roll, keep playing again out of it, and then look at Tony Parker just basically manipulate this entire play as he has Kawhi come and set the side first, so Mike Miller Hedges for a really long time, almost acts like he's switching, and then Chalmers kicks him out of there to stay with Parker. And now, as Mike Miller is recovering out to Kawhi Leonard, look at this right here. As Parker comes off this pick and roll from Duncan, he sees, look at his eyes, he's reading. Mike Miller has to come in and tag on Tim Duncan. So as Parker gets up in the air and fakes the pass to Duncan right here, really he's going to skip it all the way to the corner to Kawhi. The Spurs, obviously, player development staff did legendary work with his jump shot. Parker, such, I mean, I, I hope kids today have had a chance to study what a phenomenal pure point guard he was. So good with his pace, his change of speeds, and then always reading the help. Dump off to Duncan, look at this. Unbelievable play. And then back in Miami's end, down two. Look, look at the score, four minutes into the game. A little bit like today's games. The beginning of this kind of pace and high-scoring games nonstop. Again, look at Man who's KYP, knowing your personnel. In the paint, helping. Doesn't have a great deal of respect for Wade's corner three. Stunting at the ball. Stunting at LeBron right here. And then knowing that Wade is not going to still be out at the three-point line. He loved from these corners to back cut. So when he catches it, he's already on the move. So look at Manu. He closes out short right to the paint. He knows he doesn't have to recover to the corner. If he closes to the corner right here, Wade's by him for an easy dunk. Instead, Manu... Shortcuts it, goes right to the block, steps right in front of Wade for a huge charge, huge sacrifice, huge intelligence defensively. Again, you see not much respect for LeBron, obviously, as a jump shooter, even at this point in his career, not just the Cleveland days. Kawhi going under this kind of horns pop as LeBron sets a horn screen and then flares. Maybe too open, though. Pop called timeout right after it. Joey Crawford, wake up, give me a timeout. All right, San Antonio, after the timeout, what do they do? Same play to, they, they started the game with. This side pick and roll with Parker off the UCLA cut. Miami in the trap. Look like they're going to have Duncan again. Look at Chalmers, though, do a great job sniffing it out now. NBA players very much fool me once. Can't fool me again. They recognize Chalmers sees the same exact action. Stays in there to help take away Duncan's quick bank. Gives Chris Bosh enough time to get back. And then look at Miami's defenders on the weak side. Wade and Miller doing a great job talking it out, making sure they have these three guys covered until Chalmers can recover all the way out to the corner. And now it's just one-on-one -on -one where, hate to break it to you, Tim Duncan was still going to find a way to score. Almost always still getting to his right hand, whether it be turn around, fade away, left shoulder, jump hook, whatever it was, just got to what he wanted to do. Spo, pretty good ATOs in his own right. You see here, dials up a little Wade Chalmers pick and roll, which confuses San Antonio just enough. Parker not sure if they're going to switch or if he's going to be hedging. Manning seems to think he's switching. Parker seems to think he's hedging. Causes confusion. Nobody on Wade. Duncan tries to come over. How many guys have gotten dunked on already? All these plays that kids today are so afraid to be dunked on, be all over Twitter. How about this one? Look at Kawhi running in transition. Mike Miller. A little bit maybe of a push off by Kawhi, but my God, look at the ferocity that he dunks this ball with. Spoke, timeout, down two. Miami out of the timeout again. Ray Allen in the game now. And then look at this, Boris Diaw in the game to match up with LeBron. Ray, after timeouts, you had to know usually the play was for him. Here he sets this flex screen and then comes off to screen the screener. They do a great job. Gary Neal here does a great job staying attached. To Ray, not letting him get an easy look off the pin down. And then San Antonio, look how they pack the paint. Off of LeBron, Boris Diaw packs the paint. Off of Wade, Kawhi packs the paint. So when Ray tries to attack, sees all these bodies inside, San Antonio ends up forcing a turnover. Then Diaw at the other end, 
would play basically three miles an hour, Kyle Anderson basically, but despite how slow he played, just crafty, found a way to find angles, found a way to get the ball off the backboard and score. LeBron thought he had a little push-off. Refs didn't call it. Look at Tim Duncan. Post-ups may be closer to dead today. Gosh, if more kids could stay in school, develop the way Timmy did. Look at this duck in, call for the ball, patience, let Mike Miller get out of there. And then, like I said, Duncan almost always still coming back to that right hand. Find the backboard, such incredible touch. Tony Parker putting pressure on the defense. Oh, yeah, Shane Battier is in the game now. What is he one of the best ever at? Taking charges, hustle plays, the no stats all-star. The reason that he was always so effective in plus minus and all these other things because he was always in the right spots, always a willing team defender, sacrifice himself, make the winning basketball play. Look again how far Boris Diaw played off of LeBron. Again, that's why I bristle a little bit. You know, when people say you can't win with Simmons or you can't do this and that in the playoffs, there's a lot of different ways to win basketball games. Yes, Simmons is nowhere close to Bron's level. He, you know, he doesn't have nearly as many solutions, but Bron added a lot to his game over the years. He used to not be able to make this shot consistently or threes consistently. He worked on his game. He pushed it out. But in addition, Miami, this year's team was built around, again, Bosch and LeBron primarily, sorry, Wade and LeBron primarily getting to the rim, putting great pressure on the defense by post-ups, transition, attacking, defending, kicking out to shooters like Allen and Battier and Miller and so on and so forth. A lot of different ways to skin a cat. Not all about shooting as much as you think the NBA is all the same today. Look at this multiple efforts defense by the Spurs. Gary Neal flies him off the three-point line. Manu flies to a contest. Doesn't matter. Mario Chalmers in his bag this game, was having a big game. Look at Shane Battier here. Look how smart this play was. <laughs> Seeing in transition, Manu Ginobili is guarding Mario Chalmers. Battier is just going to kind of rub, knock him down, little flare screen in transition. Again, Chalmers with a huge three. End of the quarter, defense. Look at Boris Diaw. Again, giving him that eight-foot cushion. Keep backing up, keep backing up. It was a great job cutting off LeBron's drive. Keep back pedaling. Staying down on the shot fake. And then look at this end of the quarter. They fly Allen off the line. Here's Boris Diaw. Help out. Get a contest on the shot. Then LeBron gets the rebound. Probably would have had a putback layup. If not for Boris Diaw again. Staying in the play. Look at the multiple efforts. Look how much he hustled on this play. Despite his little chunky appearance. Phenomenal block at the end of the quarter. Big time play. Gets the Spurs all fired up. Obviously just the first quarter right here. Make sure you thumb up. Hit that subscribe button. Quarter two, rest of the game coming soon. Twitter, Scout with Brian. Instagram, Scout with Brian Podcast. Thanks for watching.